Hi everyone, welcome to the 2023 Armageddon Championship Series. We are coming to you live from our studios in Berlin and it's Elimination Day. My name is Jan Gustafsson and I'm delighted to be joined yet again by Jovanka Hauska. Jovanka, what's happening today? Uh, it's going to be an incredible day because it's the third day. And uh, yesterday we had an amazing day of action. Not one, but two Armageddons. And in the end, it was Parv Batsudlu and Vladimir Kramnik that got through with just a whisker of some seconds. Let's take a recap and see what happened. Day two was wild. First up was Kartiki Murali against Param Maksudlu. Param struck first, turning a worse position into a win. But in game two, Kartikian countered with some excellent calculation to level the match. In a frantic Armageddon game, Kartikian's clock management proved to be his downfall. In the highly anticipated matchup between former World Rapid Champion Daniel Dubov and former World Champion Vladimir Kremnik, Dubov drew first blood. But in the second game, the veteran managed to strike back, forcing the Armageddon where all hell broke loose. In the end, both sides were down to one second. Dubov losing on time. Kremnik wins the match. What a day at the Armageddon Championship Series 2023, the ultimate chess showdown of the year. Let's have a look at the format. And this is the second qualifier. We started with the Americas. Now Asia and Oceania is running. Europe and Africa are coming up soon, as well as the Women's Week. And where does it all lead? Yeah, because the finest minds in the game are all competing fiercely. Everyone is fighting to win a place in the grand finale and win the Armageddon Championship title. And all events, they're broadcast from a very famous street in Berlin, Unter den Linden, at the World Chess Club in Berlin. And take a look at these players. I mean, these are the best Blitz players around. And today, we are going to see Daniel Dubov, you know, he has a Fido rating of 2802 playing as well as Yu Yang Yi. Yes, surprisingly, both these guys lost their first match and ended up in the lower bracket. It's win or go home now. The same applies to Mr. Kartikeyan, we just saw there. Yeah, and uh, we have to mention one of our partners, Kaspersky.com. As a technology and digital privacy company, Kaspersky supports the secure advancement of chess in the digital space and its expansion into online tournaments, a perfect combination of human excellence and strong technology. Let's dive a little deeper into the format of this tournament. It's a double elimination. So all these guys already lost one of their matches and today they have to win to stick around. Vidit versus Yu Yang Yi and Kartikeyan against Dubov. And uh, there we can see the brackets. Everyone who wins will progress. Anyone who loses will go home and be eliminated. And uh, let's take a look at the first pair that are playing today. We see Vidit Gujarati against Yu Yang Yi, and this is what you might call a derby. These players, both born in 1994, face off in the first duel. And Vidit, of course, remember, he lost to Abdusatov in their first match, whereas Yu couldn't actually handle the youngster that was Gukesh. These two have played before in the past. 13 games, but 3-0 to Yu Yang Yi. Yu Yang Yi with a commanding lead, but Vidit is certainly no slouch. He became a grandmaster at 19, was the captain of the Indian team that shared gold in the online Olympia 2020, former junior world champion under 14, India's number two. It's gonna be fierce, fierce match. And uh, let's hear from Vidit Gujarati in his own words. 
my name is Vidit Gujarati. I'm a grandmaster from India. I'm 28 years old and my world rank is 17 and Indian rank is 2. I started playing chess when I was 6 years old. My dad introduced me to this game and since then I've been in love. So it's been 22 years of playing this game. My memory which stands out is when I won the under 14 world championship because I got to win after a couple of tries and where I did not do well, so this was very special. My style, I would say, is evolving all the time because chess style is closely reflected with the personality and it keeps changing, it cannot be the same. And I have many passions or hobbies apart from chess. I like to read books, I like to play many sports like basketball, badminton, swimming, and I try my best to balance it, but chess clearly takes more of my time. Mr. Vidit, but tell us a little about his opponent, Yu Yang Yi. Yeah, you know, he's a very fierce opponent, if I may say so. Also 28, became a grandmaster at, get this, 14 years old. His uh, peak rating was 2765, that was in September 2018. And he's also been a chess Olympiad gold medalist, winning in 2014. And I love the stats, also a former under 10 world champion. Must be nice. Let's have a look at our combatants there already studying the starting position. And let's hear from Yu Yang Yi in his own words. Hello, 所以说我在生活也是下过计象棋国际象棋也是我的生活中很重要的一部分在现在国际象棋的布局对于我们这些职业选手中间是一个很大的困难因为我们大家借助了电脑We've met the players. They are about to begin less than a minute already. Looking at the board, let's see the format. Three blitz games, three minutes, two blitz games, three minutes plus two seconds in case of a tie. It's Armageddon. And uh, when it comes to Armageddon, the rules are simple and they are brutal. White will have five minutes on the clock and black will get four minutes. But this is the twist. Black will have draw odds and this means white is in a must-win situation. And one of the most important people in the room is our arbiter, Tanya Caroli. She became an international arbiter in 2016 and also is very skilled in applied mathematics and languages and the players well they are getting ready and we are seconds away from lift off video with the white pieces hello 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 welcome everyone uh, let's go it's Vidit gujarati versus yu yangi it's going to be a cracker of a match and let's have our chessboard here and follow the action e4 by Vidit, c5 by yu yangi Knight to f3, knight c6. We have the open Sicilian. Take, take, knight f6, knight c3, and d6, the classical. And with it, plays his bishop to g5. Okay, bishop goes to d7. Not the most common move. By the way, with it, used to play this opening with the black pieces a lot in his childhood. It is one of his favorite openings. Goes bishop d7 here, Yu Yangi. With it goes queen d2. His idea is to long castle here. a6 has been played. And with it long castles, e6. And now pawn moves up to f3. This is the position right now on your screen. Let's see how it goes. For now, with its heart rate is 113. Yu Yangi is at a 129. So he's taken on d4, queen takes d4 and now bishop to e7 has been played 
and king moves to b1 yu yang he plays his queen to c7 very typical position i believe with it will next go g4 and he'll start pushing his pawn he can also start with h4 and black can go like b5 b4 rook b8 i mean just try to play on the queen side white will go on the king side and this is a very very interesting position let's see he goes h4 that's a good move by vidit gujarati he's just slowly trying to push forward 2 minutes 12 seconds for vidit 101 is his heart rate 2 minutes 37 seconds for yu yangi his heart rate is 116 yu yangi was beaten by gukesh and vidit was beaten by Nodirbek Abdu Satarov. So that's how they both have landed up here. The one who will lose this matchup will be eliminated from this tournament. So a lot is at stake for both of them. Hello, hello guys in the chat. Pratichi, welcome. It's going to be good fun following this. And then we also have Kartikian playing today. B5 was played and did with it already push his queen back to d2 yeah that's what he does he brings his queen back and now uh yu yangi thinking about what exactly should he do actually with it could have with it plays queen d2 b4 and next he plays his knight to e2 now this knight will reroute itself to uh, d4 and also many times it can go g4 knight g3 and then the bishop can come back and you can push forward controlling the h5 square he goes a5 now and what did with it do did he play this move already or aha with it has actually gone for the move c4 wow very interesting move c4 and his point is that if you come and chop this pawn off then i'm going to push forward with e5 you you can't take because then i will take on f6 and take on d7 so e5 is a very very strong move and so c4 very interesting decision by with it a4 played by yu yangi and now with it goes knight to d4 his opponent castles I like with its decision of c4 because look if b3 is going to push a3 if a3 is going to push b3 so with c4 he's kind of closed down the queen side there g4 played by with it he is now going to attack maybe he will take on f6 next move and then push g5 or he'll come back with his bishop bishop and then push rook fc8 played and now maybe it's time to drop down your bishop from g5 so that you can start pushing your pawns forward yeah omkar walude says vidit is playing confidently here i agree vidit has 1 minute 13 seconds he brings his bishop back to e3 and now he's he's asking uh, yu yangi what are your plans against the move g5 or h5 h5 i think he'll play first h5 then g5 because if you play g5 first then the knight will settle down on h5 and the pawns will be stopped this is happening in berlin right now and uh, this is over the board chess armageddon is the name of the tournament it has uh, two blitz games and one uh, if you if the score is tied at 1 1 then they go into armageddon Queen a5 played. Next, what do you do? Pushes the pawn to h5. Very interesting. Now, Yu Yangi might want to trade off the queens by playing b3. He's definitely under pressure because next move will be g5 followed by g6. That's how the position can be opened up. Roger Rodriguez says, can black play h5 here? Well, instead of queen a5, maybe. But now that Vidit has played h5, you can't do that. And Yu Yangi down, to, down on the clock. He goes bishop e8, g5 played. Knight jumps to d7. And will Vidit now push forward with g6? Yes, he does. He sacrifices a pawn and Yu Yangi goes knight to e5. 
he says i don't care about this pawn if you take here i'll take with the bishop if you take here i'll just move my king to h8 and look at with it he sacrificed another pawn now f takes g6 very important move to make has he played it yes he plays it that's a good move and with it must take at g7 he's playing inspired chess but will this be enough h takes g6 and now b3 very important after h takes g6 so as to trade the queens and he finds it great move by yu yangi and with it must try and avoid the trade of queens but will he do that yes he does he plays queen h2 and now after b takes a2 king a2 h5 played it seems like the black king looks safer and the white king is under big pressure queen f4 played by vidit gujarati he is in the attack he has 147 is his heart rate 136 for yu yangi and now what is his idea he wants to go to h6 followed by h8 he goes a3 he's going to attack and vidit plays b3 but that's a mistake queen c3 he should have played here uh, instead b4 that would have been way better but he goes b3 queen comes in threatening a mate on b2 rook d2 played and now with it uh, here g5 queen h2 queen takes e3 96 but this is game over because now he's at he's losing the queen on h2 and the rook on d2 he plays rook e2 and now what do you do next ah knight takes h2 rook e3 but with it is now simply a piece down and this attack has not worked out well for with it gujarati yu yangi totally winning this and with it now well, most likely will lose this in a must win situation in the next game but let's see if there's any hope here he goes bishop f6 and now yeah this is just trades rook e8 rook e8 bishop e8 and he's just a piece down so with this yu yangi scores the win here and Vidit Gujarati is losing this. Yeah, there you have it. Yu Yangi playing fantastic chess actually. But, um, you know, Vidit's attack, which was H6 move, was very inspired. But somehow, Black found all the important resources. And then H5, A3, maybe B4 was important so that after queen b4 you have rook b1 but it's not so easy to spot the moment he played b3 it was game over because g5 was such a nice move you lost a piece there let's go back to Jan Gustafsson and Jovan Kahuska it started opening up the position accelerating the play and uh, after Pawn Where did it all go wrong, Mr. Vida? This all looked completely natural, but then he went for this attack with his queen later and ran into a big, big counter. Here he still had a chance to keep the position close, but he didn't do it. Let's see if we have another highlight from later. There is the black queen entering. Threat checkmate. And a big move from This the was the star move, disconnecting the white queen from her bishop on e3, picking up material and yeah. effectively winning the game. And there we saw White's position just collapse like a house of cards. There was absolutely nothing that Vidit could do to save the game from now on. I've never seen a house of cards collapse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you learn something new every day. Yeah. This was a big victory for Yu Yangi. I'm not sure. Maybe we will have a final yep, highlight of him wrapping it up. Here is closing moments, and all he has to do is just keep pushing the age pawn. And there's simply no way the knight can handle Black's extra material and, of course, the rampant age pawn. And there we see the handshake. And now Vidit will have 55 seconds to recover. Just get over all that adrenaline that must be pumping through his veins because now it's do or die time. Just if he does pool. not win this game, he is out of the competition. He has to go home. Yeah. They will send him to the airport directly. No extra night at the hotel. <laughs> Rules are tough here. So stakes are very, very high for Mr. Vidit. And what's he gonna do against Yu Yang Yi, who can be very solid with the white pieces if he chooses needing just a draw?
to advance in the competition. Yeah, he has 15 seconds to think about it. The main thing is just to keep the pieces on the board, you know, to keep that tension alive. Seven. Okay, guys, let's go. We are now down to this next game where Vidit is going to play with the black pieces against Yu Yangi. So e4, c5, Vidit goes for the Sicilian knight f3. And what is Vidit thinking? He goes d6. Will he also play the classical Sicilian? Because that is his main opening that he has played for all these years. Knight f6, knight c3, and he goes knight c6 as well. Wow. This is going to be very, very exciting. And let's see how Yu Yang Yi continues now. Maybe Bishop G5, he will also play this. Yes, he does. And we are down to the same opening. Queen D2, A6 played, Long Castle. You know, generally when you are in a crunch situation, you go towards the openings that had helped you when you were young. And you played it many, many times because that is where you have the biggest control of. Uh, and I think Vidit feels really at home when he plays this. For Vidit, this is a very important game. He has played three games uh, in Berlin. Three Blitz games and he has lost all three of them. He needs one victory here to sort of get his confidence back b5 bishop takes f6 happens gf6 and f5 played so very very good chess by you youngie you really don't want to take here as with it because if you take here the entire structure is spoiled your d6 pawn becomes isolated d5 square becomes weak so you really want to keep this structure intact as black but how do you continue you can't castle here so maybe you want to go long castle the king might be safer there or you would leave the king in the center and with it actually goes queen b6 king b1 and then long castle so he's put his king on c8 and mainly black has a structural disadvantage here uh, but it is compensated by having the bishop pair that's how things roll and generally you put your pawn on h5 you will bring your rook to g8 you will bear down on the g file that you want to play that's how you want to play queen h6 played wow that's a very interesting move by you yangi and generally the queen really puts a lot of pressure on the black position here it can come in put pressure on f7 with it brings his king to b8 the bishop develops to d3 and uh, I think a good square for the knight is on e5. I think that would be a good square to play your knight on. Uh, he plays knight a5. Mm, that is not looking so good for Vidit. Because how is he going to meet queen g7 and attack here? No, he goes queen h5. He puts pressure here, which is logical. But I think bishop e8 is how generally you want to meet that. Or rook f8, rook h f8. But then h7 is hanging. Let's see how Vidit meets it. Yu Yangi putting a lot of pressure. Firstly, he has won the first game. Secondly, he is putting pressure on Vidit. So Vidit needs to respond. He goes Bishop E8 back, defends the pawn on F7. And he tells Yu Yangi, what are your next plans? Because for Vidit, the ideas revolve around pushing the pawn to B4. Queen H6 played. But now, can you not simply push the pawn to B4? Knight cannot jump to A4 because the Bishop is controlling that square. That's how it is. Let's see. With it, how does he do? Yu Yangi uh, has 1 minute 25 seconds here. He is thinking about his move. Uh, he And he plays queen at 6. And now with it, needs to either play b4. What is the idea? Uh, if, if you don't play b4. Yeah, you want to play b4. Let's say b4. The knight will go back to e2 and then how do you continue as black uh, generally in such positions once the knight has moved away from the d5 square what can you do here guys black to play how do you play taruna ragini says for with it always but what do you do here in this position as black it's a very typical idea once you play b4 knight e2 you can afford to play this move exactly with it plays it e5 uh, Rohan not d5 but e5 and now there's no knight jumping on on the d5 square 
he goes knight to d2 he's seen that he can maybe put his knight on c4 maybe exchange it with knight b3 but with it goes to the c file that is uh, an open file for his rook and he puts his rook there and knight to c1 white playing a bit passively but you can see that if white can get knight b3 knight b3 a b3 followed by the knight sitting on c4 he would be doing really well so where does with it next go this queen is also pretty irritatingly placed right now it's not doing much but when it goes to g7 it can become an important piece did he go bishop b5 i think he played bishop b5 and yu yangi instantly played nc b3 and then with it now maybe knight b7 played by him his idea is he wants to play a5 a4 queen h5 played once again attacking this pawn here rook hf8 with it says i'm going to give up this pawn you want to take h7 take it because my play is on the queen side by pushing the pawns but the queen comes back to e2 such a strong move and he's stopping a5 a4 so with it plays rook c7 he's waiting bishop takes b5 and now maybe you take with the queen and trade the queens but with it is in a must win situation so he takes with the a pawn and now oh what a move by you yangi knight f1 i love it the knight is going to e3 and then to d5 ask the bishop on e7 how it's feeling right now queen c6 knight oh he could have played knight e3 actually because after queen takes e4 rook h e1 with the idea of a pawn sacrifice was very strong he goes rook d5 queen c4 queen d3 some hope for for with it but after knight c5 knight takes c5 he plays his knight to c5 and i think he will take knight takes c5 now with it is completely lost here because he is positionally outplayed d takes c5 his bishop is horrible um, maybe you can even trade here trade here and play knight e3 rook d1 and it's game over uh, let's see how yu yangi deals with it he has 37 seconds there are many many ways to play here the bishop on e7 is just completely hemmed in he keeps the queens on the board which is kind of a risky decision knowing that you only need a draw and with it goes rook a7 hitting the a2 pawn maybe you can just play b3 now that's the that's a very important move actually to play and he plays it b3 with it has only one square for his queen which is to go to c3 but then rook d3 maybe important he plays queen c3 it's still a fight with it down to 11 seconds but it's clear that uh you that if someone is better it's yu yangi 93 played and he just needs a draw rook g8 rook h d1 looks very very natural and he plays his rook h to d1 the knight on e3 is brilliantly placed defending here maybe you want to go to rook g4 but that is also defended by the knight so king c8 played and um yu yangi comes back and he says i'm attacking your c3 pawn b4 is played but that creates another weakness on the c4 square the knight is going to be very well placed here he plays a4 what a fantastic move because if you take here he wants to play king a2 and now after h4 g g4 h3 played with it trying his best to create play here but it's not going to be easy rook g1 and now what does he do yes 3 2 goes rook d7 offers the trade of rooks rooks are traded king takes d7 rook g3 the h pawn is hanging so he moves his rook away there to defend it the king comes out which is a very logical thing to do and the bishop goes to f8 king d1 king c6 king d2 bishop g7 and now g5 looks strong but he goes king d3 rook check knight what a monstrous knight that is sits so strong on d5 king c4 it's massacre on the light squares but maybe with it has some hopes here Yu Yangi getting under pressure with it making a comeback bishop g5 oh baby not bishop g5 a better move was bishop f4 but then king e2 rook goes back there is still a lot of things that can happen here because both players down to their last five seconds where does with it move his rook he goes bishop f4 he offers the trade of the bishop for a rook bishop for a knight and rook h8 he goes bishop takes h2 blunder here no rook h1 is coming up and actually with it has lost his f6 pawn and also is he better is he losing knight to d5 is his h pawn super strong yeah he pushes his pawn 
I don't know who's winning this. Knight f4, e f4, king comes back. Rook h3 might be a good move. Yes, he plays it. But will king f2? King f2, then there's f3 stopping everything. No, he goes king e5. Takes, takes, king g6. And oh, there's another passer there, which is actually moving. Rook comes back. Is with it going to win this? Not so sure. Not so sure who's winning. Maybe it's winning for with it. He's pawn up. And Yu Yang is 4 3. He pushes. Rook takes a7. He can take. Rook takes h2. And move in with the rook there. Rook a2. But then I think rook a2 should do the trick. Yes, he plays it because you have c4, b3 break. Check king here. King takes f4, c4. That's how it can be played. Yeah, c4. He pushes there. e5, king f7. Good move. Very important. Takes b3. Is with it winning this b2 b1 coming up? What a fight back by with it Gujarati. And now king takes e6. Check king goes back. He's winning this. He is winning this b2. B2 takes on c2. Also winning with it Gujarati has won this. What a game! What a game this is. Amazing chess. And now rook b1. Queen, queen, queen. Ah, he doesn't, he, ah, if you queen, then take, take, and maybe c7. So he just said, okay, first bring the king, and with it, survives another game here. Wow, what a game that was. 1-1, one, one, we are going into an Armageddon. Let's go back to our commentary team in Berlin and see what they have to say about with its play. In all the tournaments. Finally, I'm very much looking forward to it. But Yu Yang Yi will be kicking himself. He had such a good position. And then he decided to play it too safe, maybe, trying not to do anything and saying, You can't pass. But we found a way. We'll see it later. Here we see the beginning of this endgame that looks very, very pleasant for White still. I mean, take a look. Great knight for White, bad bishop, but Vidit manages the impossible would escalate later on. Here we see a key moment, the bishop entering, now the rook targeting this pawn, and all of a sudden, Yu Yang Yi couldn't keep control, has to give up a pawn, and all hell broke loose, because now Black has serious counterplay with his past H pawn. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That was a key turning point there, and here we see the Here's nice the finish, finish the breakthrough. From all the pawns but one give their life to support promotion of the other one. This can't be captured because the rook would be taken, and it's desperation by Yu Yang Yi playing on his last seconds here. Mm -hmm. Beat it. And both players just playing on instinct, but it's completely one for Vidit. Well, well, well. <laughs> and here we see the closing moments where Yu Yang Yi sets one final trap. He uh, puts his rook behind the killer past B pawn. And there you see, with a black king coming in to mark the C pawn, there's just no way for it. And Yu Yang Yi resigns, and we are seconds away from Armageddon. Let's go. Poor players didn't have any time to recover. In one minute, they have to play the Armageddon where White gets five minutes, has to win, and Black gets four minutes, has to make a draw, or of course win. Yeah. Who you got? Oh, uh, I, I don't know. I, I suspect that Yu Yang Yi will still make it. His form has been very, very impressive. But I mean, this is it. We will see a winner, and we will see someone progress to the next stage, and someone has to leave the competition. And there we see, see the players. players. Vidit looks like he guys. Vidit Gujarati has the white pieces now, and his opponent has black. Vidit has five minutes. Yu Yangi has four. Uh, and off we go. Knight f3 by Vidit. D5, g3. I would say white generally has a small edge here because it's over the board chess, and one minute makes a lot of difference. D4 played by Vidit. Short castling. Plays his pawn to c4, takes on c4, queen c2. He's attacking the c4 pawn now. Uh, this is Catalan, open Catalan. And uh, now with it takes on c4. So they are playing hardcore theory. 
and this is maybe to Yu Yangi's advantage because generally these lines are very solid and he can get his initial moves out very quickly. He, as you can see, he's not used even 10 seconds while Vidit has used more than 30 seconds on the clock. So after take, take, Knight comes out to C3. This is all uh, standard stuff. And you can see with it there, he is looking very confident because the last win meant so much for him. He hadn't won a single game over here. And with this victory, he says that I am back. Uh, the lighting is so filmy. Yeah, they have actually made so, so many nice uh, uh, touches here. If you see with the lighting, the videos of the players. So a great job by the World Chess team here. And uh, they have brought this tournament in a very interesting format to the viewers. Now, uh, Yu Yangi gives up his bishop and then limits with its bishop with the move c6. With it plays h4. This is a position where you have a very small advantage. And he puts his pawn on h5. This is a typical with it like position where you can grind on and on endlessly. So Yu Yangi has to be careful. But if you look at the time... 3 minutes 41 seconds for Vidit while 3 minutes 33 seconds for Yu Yangi uh, and Vidit has to take care of the time because there is no increment here. You are going to play with just the 5 minutes that are there on your clock. That is what Armageddon is all about and now Vidit has even gone below the time of Yu Yangi which is not good news. He plays his knight to A2. And he says, this is attack. Awaken Youth says, Sagar bhai, Yu Yangi ki position appreciate mat karo. Hume dhag dhag hone lagta hai. Aray, the position is just normal. Knight C1, you can go to B3 or D3. Let's see if Vidit manages to... Oh, he plays E5. Vidit takes. Bishop takes. And he can bring his knight to D3. And then Rook D8. With it brings his queen back and he's threatening to take on e5, queen e5 and chop this pawn on b7. That's his idea. How were the colors decided for Armageddon? I think uh, they are based on alternate colors. Maybe that's how it is, perhaps. So with it was black in the last game. So he got white bd6, king g2. Typical move there, improving his position and Yu Yangi plays Rook D7. Yu Yangi is playing so fast, 3 minutes, he's not even used 1 minute on the clock. Rook C1, he gets these 2 Rooks, double down the D file, which is a great spot for his Rooks. Then Rook goes to C2, Ah, he also wants to double up there. And the Knight comes to E4. You really don't want to be taking here because queen e4 comes in with a check and the king is weak. Rook c4 is a strong move here for Vidit and then improving his rook's position. Will he find it? It's not so easy. Did he find it? He plays queen to c4. And now after knight g5, I think this bishop is going to be taken. Yu Yangi might have to decide knight g5. Maybe there's bishop g4. Yeah, so you have to be careful there. So I think he's gone back to f6, which is good news for Vidit. And did did he play rook? No, he played rook c c1. Ah, he's brought his rook back. You see, it's a very positional game. Both players not really understanding how to make progress. Yeah, there's no no increment. Yu Yangi's heartbeat is 138. Vidit with all his practice of black lotus. And you know, his 800 day streak is doing really well. He has his heart rate at 110. Bishop e5 played, but now a very good move is b4. Just sort of getting rid of this backward pawn, but maybe not so easy to find. He goes bishop e2, defends his knight, improves his bishop. And then knight d5 played. How are they measuring the heart rate? They're wearing a watch. If you see, both the players are wearing a watch and that is how the heart rate is being measured. Bishop to g4, hitting the rook. Uh, the only problem for Vidit is that he has a little less time than Yu Yangi. And he's also in a must win kind of a thing. So now, where does Vidit play? Did he play knight? Oh, he's played his knight to c5 it seems. Yeah, he's played his knight there. 
and now is bishop b2 a free pawn being offered i think vidit has blundered this bishop b2 maybe he wanted rook b1 but there is this intermediate move b5 ab cb queen b5 and knight c3 hitting the queen and the rook whoa this is not at all easy to spot will this be spotted by yu yangi if he spots it but this is a move that has put yu yangi under the thinking uh, spell he is now thinking and this is exactly what vidit wanted because now he's built up a 20 second lead so even though bishop b2 is a great move here for yu yangi he does it he plays it and now vidit must play rook b1 he plays it can yu yangi find the move b5 it's not at all easy no he doesn't he plays knight b6 but now after queen e4 this is actually better position for vidit can vidit play queen e4 has he played his queen there and i think after queen e4 this is actual advantage for vidit you know how because after queen e4 queen e4 rook a uh, knight e4 rook d1 you take with bishop and then b2 is hanging and b6 is also loose he finds queen e4 good move here by vidit 1 minute 10 seconds takes on e4 knight e4 rook d1 takes with the bishop b2 is hanging how do you save it knight c4 that is a big blunder now with it must play bishop b3 or bishop e2 and he will be a piece up he finds bishop e2 with it gujarati is in the winning position here yu yangi in big trouble with it is now going to win a piece because he cannot save his knight bishop is hanging there's just no way he plays rook e8 but now knight c5 an important move to be found by with it can you find it 56 seconds 121 is his heart rate yu yangi is heart rate 142 with it has with it has 48 seconds yu yangi 42 seconds finds knight c5 good move with it playing top class chess and now bishop a3 to hit the knight and then you can play bishop takes c4 but he plays knight b7 this is also fine the knight is hanging he plays knight b2 important to move in with the rook to b6 finds it again c5 take the pawn on a5 and then rook a8 play knight c6 is the a4 pawn hanging he's taken on a4 rook b8 check oh my god this is a mating attack will with it go and checkmate yes rook b7 g6 is hanging takes on g6 c pawn is moving forward but can with it checkmate he goes rook c7 he's like no need to checkmate i'll stop the c pawn from queening and then bishop f7 king f8 is there a mate somewhere bishop d6 check oh my god 23 seconds for with it i think he's going to win this on time he's going to win on time here f4 played beautiful chess by we know he touches his rook he blunders a full piece with it is piece up now check he needs to move faster c2 is the pawn queening checkmate no rook c6 rook it oh it's a free rook with it wins oh my god what a game Yu Yang is shivering with 150 heartbeats per minute. With it as 161. Well, not even Black Lotus can help here, guys. This was <laughs> an unbelievable moment. What a game! With it, Gujarati goes through to the next round. He is not out of the tournament. Yu Yang is out. Whoa! What a game that was. That was lit there. Unbelievable chess. Let's just have a look at what happened. Bishop b2 with it found all the amazing moves here. Rook b1, b5 was important here for Yu Yangi. He missed it. Knight b6, and now it was very important to find queen e4, which also with it did. And he played amazing chess in the chat. Everyone's like, "Yay, with it op!" And this is a live event, guys. It has happened. With it moves to the next round, and he will most likely take on. the loser uh, in the game of gukesh and nodir back which will happen tomorrow i think i guess so but we will get to know who we will play and here with it actually he moved so quickly he didn't waste even a second he was right up there he was moving his pieces quickly and there yu yangi blundered the rook with uh, when rook a2 was played he just blundered it and bishop takes a2 came and he was lost on time with it at 14 seconds more i mean i was so nervous 
Whew, let's go and see what Vidit and the commentators have to say. There, there's a lot of action happening there. Yeah. He still managed yes. to allow Vidit to come back. I mean, if, I mean, it really must be very painful, as you say, because, you know, of course, he won the first game. Second game looked like it was going to be completely smooth affair. And somehow he panicked. And yeah, yeah, Awaken you says players' hands were yeah. shaking. Absolutely. Just poor clock handling. What a pity. But the worst thing for him for... is now he has to go give an interview, <laughs> tell everybody what went wrong. So let's switch to Fiona with the interview. Yeah, let's see what Yu Yangi has to say. Yangi, a really tough uh, loss in this match against uh, Vidit in the Armageddon in the end. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the games, especially the Armageddon game in the end? Yes, uh, I think uh, this is a very uh, bad uh, uh, result for me. Yeah. Of course, I have many times to win, <laughs> but uh, mm. I don't know why. Uh, I long think, uh, yeah. I forgot uh, in, in clock, uh, yeah. Oh, you forgot because, the clock. Uh, uh, in before, I played many games, <laughs> such as calm. Okay. Uh. Did you feel that this, the loss in the second game was very tough? Uh, that Fidet managed to come back to first summer get on? Did you feel it was difficult to lose the, the second game uh, for you? The game Pretty you and me doesn't Did speak you that too much English. Moment? Uh, in last game? Second game. Second game. Second game. <laughs> second game. I think maybe Rook G1, Mystic, maybe Nav 6. Yeah. Uh, Rook G1, giving up the edge to pawn. Correct. <laughs> okay. Just one final question. Um, who do you think is going to win this tournament? This tournament? This tournament, who do you think will win? Who do you think will win this tournament? I think uh, uh, Yuyang is like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we'll have to find out. Thank you so much for now. Back to the studio uh, with Yuvan Kanyan. I don't know is a Thank word you, which Fiona, is. And it's my utmost pleasure to have oh, a with it, it, yeah. us in Hello, the studio now with it. What a match! It was crazy. <laughs> you yeah. had us all entertained there. I mean, how were you feeling? You know, you lost your first game. I was second. very upset after the first game because it's like, okay, you're just one mistake away from going home, and my home yeah. is really far. So I don't really, <laughs> I didn't want to go back. But luck smiled also on me. Also from uh, Mumbai, you have to take the a second clap. game, and it was much needed because I had not won a single game so far. So mm. uh, it felt good. That gave me some confidence for the Armageddon. Mm -hmm. What happened there in that second game? It looked like you were in trouble, you had this good night, but then what did you do wrong? I think um, there was some fork which I missed probably, some 97 check. But apart from that, it's typical classical Sicilian. You're completely bad, but you have some counterplay which keeps you alive. Really? Yeah. Uh, and at some point he panicked. Uh, when I got my rook on h4, he panicked. And that, that was the turning point. And then in the Armageddon. Oh my God! Did you Guys, did you have a game plan going on? How do you approach it with White? Um, I had thought that I'd take White because I need that extra minute. And, and as you saw in the game, I was down on time despite having was White. Saying, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my God! Um, but um, I just thought of keeping the game going, you know, not to resolve all the tension. And once he took his bishop on b2, it became complicated, and that was my chance to, you know, uh, make a mess. Congratulations, you kept your tournament going. Thank you so much, Vidit. Thank you, thank you. Nice. Yeah, this, uh, I think Vidit also made a post on social media saying that this is the first time I did makeup before a game. Um, when I was commentating at Chess Super League along with Samai, we used to do makeup before the before the commentary so i'm kind of aware of what it is but of course for the players it's completely new and they are like putting up a show there 
which is very interesting with you can see the lighting the entire studio setup they are given the jackets with their names on it and uh, it's a, it's a very nice uh, event organized by world it's chess time to mention one of our partners the fide online arena which hosts rated tournaments and games 24 hours per day join the arena and you'll get a fide id profile on fide.com and access to a pro chess community official online ratings and titles all recognized by the international chess federation as well as prize money tournaments and much more so play official games at chessarena.com Aditya Yadav, that who was there back to at the, the opening action. ceremony, Feels says like we still need a breather, but we have a the lo match location up. is top Karate notch. The Amazing. I was there. One yeah, yeah, yeah. Of the big favorites Good to know, Aditya. Daniel Dubov, rated 2802. The Asia Oceania series is not slow. Ah, this is going to be cracker yeah. of okay, a game. About this matchup. Well, it will certainly Cracker be of a game. exciting. I mean, both their their Let's game, see if Kartikeyan can beat Dubo. Maza yeah, yeah. Kartikeyan, just 24 year, four years old, became a grandmaster at 16. He's been a two-time national champion. Let's rate him Also, recently got married. He was one of our online qualifiers. You know, Kartikeyan is the first Learned ever visitor to Chess Base India. It's, it's not enough to play chess. You know? I like the under 12 and under 16 world champion title. Even better, the online qualifier is a double world champion in this event. And let's hear from Katikian himself. He was here in uh, our studio. He's the first guest with his wife. So I'm Katin you know. Murli, Grandmaster from India. I'm 23 years of age and I've been playing chess for the past 15 years. My father had a surgery when I was six years old, and uh, we used to play chess, checkers carom, all sorts of boards and I got interested in chess and I continued professionally then. Okay, there was a moment where I met Anand in 2006. I was one of the participants where he gave the simul and that inspired me to take chess as a profession. Ah, I would say nice. I am an See? aggressive player. Just tactical. meeting Anand. I like to calculate well. To become a successful chess player, I practiced almost 12 hours a day. Wow. And I think that is my biggest strength, which is my hard work, my focus, and my dedication. The best chess moments in my career is beating Maxim Machir Lagrav in Gibraltar 2019. It is so special because I also came you beat Ali Reza with Queen Sack. So that is not so angry at me whenever I see only chess. So it's not kind of easy, but I'm <laughs> trying to manage it. My wife gets angry at me when I see only chess. His opponent, Daniel Dubov. <laughs> Man, I think Kartikeyan well. did not want to say that. We time together in remote locations anywhere on the world. We were both in Magnus Carlsen's team during the World Championship matches in 2018 and 2021, where Daniel also got to play a lot of Blitz games with the world champion. It paid off. He became the world uh, rapid chess champion. Dubo yesterday lost to Kramnik. It worked nicely for Magnus having Daniel's creativity on his team. Grandmaster at 15. Gustafsson was also rating. part of Let's the team. See. So it was, was Gustafsson, Dubov in Magnus's team. My name is Daniel Dubov. <laughs> I'm 26. I'm Grandmaster from Russia and I've spent about 20 years of my life playing chess. Both my father and grandfather were pretty decent chess players. So I think being a kid, Dubov I saw is one of the like, coolest. My father to, uh, to teach me. I think he, he got tired of me, so he brought me to the chess club. And this is more or less how it started. People seem to think that my style is a very aggressive one, and to some extent I think it's true. So it really depends, but if you use three, three adjectives, it would be brave, stupid, and maybe unique as well. My most memorable moments are not related to my best achievements. If I need to share one, let's say I won a brilliant game in European Team Championship against Rasmus Wane, and it helped Russian team to save the match, and then eventually we went on to win the tournament. Whoa, Once again, I don't, I don't amazing. remember the day we won the tournament, but I remember the day I won a brilliant game. And I would say my main priority is living the life. And then, secondly, I have chess where I'm a professional. I mean, I try to be good, I try to win all the tournaments I play, but still, it's uh, much more important to keep yourself entertained. Nice. Nice. That was a very nice statement he and, said, uh, which was um, from... that, you know, uh, I don't remember the day when we won the tournament, 
but uh, won the event. But I do remember the day when we actually won, uh, when I won that game, which just shows what a sort of an artist Daniel Dubo is, and he loves to sort of create things, and that's how he is. Uh, let's get cracking. We have Kartikeya and Murli with the white pieces against Daniel Dubo. I have some water with me, guys. Let's go. Let's see how this game turns up. And uh, Itachi says, Sagar, why be sure to cover World Championship from 9th? Yes, I will try my best. And uh, okay, off we go. E4, E5, Knight F3, Knight C6, Bishop B5. We have the Rui Lopez on the board. Bishop A4, Knight F6, short castling played here. And Bishop E7 played on the board. Let's see what does Kartikeyan do. He goes rookie one, mainline stuff. B5, I want to see what is Dubo's preparation looking like. He short castles here. And now... The main move, of course, is c3, but then Dubo may go for the marshal with d5. Will Karthikian play a4 for the anti marshal or h3? No, he goes c3, allowing Dubo to play marshal. This is going to be exciting. Does Karthikian have any new ideas up his sleeve? Because it's not a very, um, it's sort of well known by now that the marshal is around equal. So, rookie 5, and I think he's played his pawn up to c6. And Kartikeyan now thinking about it because there is d3 and there's also d4. You need to open up your bishop, get your knight out. But you need, generally everyone used to play d4. But then they also figured out that d3 is a possibility. But Kartikeyan here, oh in fact he didn't go c6, he went bishop b7. Oh my god, this is something new. I haven't seen it ever. Bishop b7, c6 is the main move. That's why Kartikeyan is taking his time here. He's thinking because d4 is playable, but then maybe he has some other ideas like bishop f6 here. He plays queen to f3. My god, I don't know. I don't know this stuff. Okay, firstly, bishop d6 is possible, but then this bishop takes d5. And that doesn't work. So, Daniel Dubo, what did he play? Did Dubo go bishop d6? Oh, he went there. He went bishop d6 and I mean Dubo, now bishop d5 must be played. If you play rook d5, which looks like a great move, it's a big trap and Karthikian don't fall for it. Guys, what is the winning move for black here? Can anyone find it? CS says the b-roll for b roll footage adds a unique touch to this opening piece. Yeah, I know they have done some great work, but bishop d6 is such a sly trap. You must take with the bishop, rook d5, queen e7, there is a mate here. And if you try to stop it with king f1, my rook joins in. Not there. Rook a e8. And there's a mate. So therefore, Kartikian finds the right move. He takes bishop, takes d5. That is the correct move. And now c6 played. And he goes rook e1. Very interesting uh, chess. Takes and he puts his pawn on d4. And he tells Dubo that look, you are a pawn down. Your bishop on b7 is not so great. By the way, bishop h2 there that didn't work, guys. I'll, I'll come to it. Uh, he goes g3, rook a8, bishop e3, and now rook e6 maybe. Okay, firstly, the, the point which I was trying to make here is after bishop d6, if you play rook d5, there is no bishop h2 because after king h2, you see this rook is actually defended both these ways. So it's not really working out, but the move was queen e7. That's such a tough move. Oof, oof, oof. Wow, this is amazing. Okay, anyway. He, uh, Kartikian is strong, he found it, he found the move, he goes back, he plays d4, he finds g3, he plays bishop e3, this is phenomenal, he's found everything over the board, he goes knight d2, again a good move, rook e8 played, and now rook e2, but why rook e2? I think he wanted to go rook e2 and rook e1, that was his idea, but maybe a better idea was knight f1, just uh, defending, but he goes rook e2, and now a5 played, he brings his other rook. The only problem I see here is that after b4, bishop, a6, the rook can get trapped. So you have to be careful with regards to it. Can we go b4 or is it too much to ask for? Maybe b4, there is bishop f4, 
trading everything down and that won't be good so daniel dubo has to be careful here oh he he plays b4 which was a mistake he 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 made this mistake and kartikeyan instantly plays queen f4 what a nice move by kartikeyan murli and uh, the point is that after bishop f4 he will go rook e6 let's say you take back rook e6 rook e6 f e6 now queen f4 queen f4 g f4 and yes your pawn structure is ruined and maybe you can do this but look white is a pawn up 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 2 3 4 5 so white is a pawn up so bishop f4 excellent move by kartikeyan he has 40 second daniel dubo has 1 minute 55 seconds and you can see dubo unhappy because with this move white has solved all his opening problems the time difference is quite a lot you you are right but i think this move bishop f4 kind of solves it because now kartikeyan's moves are pretty easy you know he he takes on e6 he takes here and so on uh and daniel dubo also thinking which once again proves this point that if you are under you know there's a big time difference the best way to overcome that time difference is to find good moves when you find good moves you are making your opponent think more and that is important i think you must take with the pawn now he takes b takes c3 and by the way a very important uh, thing here to note is that after bishop f4 kartikeyan can take with the pawn uh, but he can also take with the queen and then after if he takes on c3 you can play queen e3 knight f3 knight e5 and now although the material is equal the knight will be clearly superior to the bishop that's how it is but okay he takes with the g pawn i don't like this ugliness here with these doubled pawns and an isolated pawn on h2 but notice that the e6 pawn is also weak so if you try and go and attack with f8 here i will just chop off this pawn on e6 that's why he first goes bishop c8 defends this and kartikeyan goes knight to b3 his idea is to go to c5 rook f8 played and the rook jumps into e5 kartikeyan says i'm not going to give you material easily rook f6 but now can we just move the knight to c5 how h3 played i mean what was the problem with knight c5 wasn't it a good move maybe it was possible but then there's rook g6 check he didn't want to get into this business he wanted to create a loop for his king on h2 so h3 h6 f5 played oh f5 what sort of a move is that f5 i i was thinking that kartikeyan will go knight c5 just put his pieces on the dark squares but he pushes his pawn to f5 and his idea is that after e takes f5 he wants to play queen takes d5 check that's how he wants to continue okay he takes e takes f5 queen takes d5 check king h7 played and the knight jumps to c5 knight to c5 the board virendra savant says queen takes f4 will then open the diagonal for the bishop mm. well right now it seems like this bishop is definitely looking to get into action from somewhere maybe f4 and then open this up maybe that's how he wants to play but for now dubov goes queen b6 and this is not an easy position for kartikeyan because he's coming in here both players down to 7 seconds oh my god queen c6 he's attacking h1 rook e3 played f4 brilliant move rook e4 but bishop f5 coming in you know he first takes on h3 king e2 5 seconds for dubo needs to move faster bishop f5 played rook takes f4 is hanging but he goes rook e5 bishop g4 king here queen f3 good move and kartikeyan has only 4 seconds left he goes knight d3 but the h pawn is very strong queen h1 rook e8 rook e8 kartikeyan rook e8 Rook e8 is winning. No, he plays it now. Rook e6. What? Bishop e6. Free rook. Free bishop. Oh, what? What is wrong with Dubo? What is wrong? He was just winning, and Kartikeyan. What a comeback! Because here, after queen f3, knight d3, queen h1 was such a big blunder. Rook e8 was winning, but he goes rook e1, queen f3, and then goes. but now there was h5 and the point is that after check king here check king can escape from here 
but instead he went what did he play here rookie six oh just gave up the piece let's have a look at this what they are showing here c6 and then he moved uh, rookie one i think he played the opening really well and kartikeyan really uh i would say deserved this win in some way because he fought well but dubov didn't deserve to lose for sure because i mean dubov managed to sort of stabilize himself play some great moves here attacked against the white king and now yeah pratichi you are right dubov panicked in low time got flagged yesterday and today also uh he has just he's not able to keep his nose that seems like an important thing here kartikeyan has beaten dubo which means that if kartikeyan wins today it we might see all four indians move ahead and uh, which would mean that then yu yangi and dubo would be eliminated So the next game is about to begin now and uh, yeah armu says this proves that everyone is rated 1000 in low time you know there was this one thing where uh, someone asked uh, i think magnus or some great player that how to play well in time pressure and he said don't get under time pressure you know that's how you can play well uh, it's not easy or feasible to play well under time pressure when you have very little time to think how can you make the best moves it's not at all possible but the next game about to begin this time daniel dubo will have the white pieces he's known for his world class opening preparation let's see how he continues how does he open up the game and yes vidit did win today no no prt there's no increment after move 60 it's just pure uh five minutes versus four in armageddon knight f3 d5 ah we are seeing the catalan the move that actually the opening that helped magnus carlsen beat yan nepomnishi in the 2021 world championship which was i believe a lot of its um credit should go to dubov i guess because he is an expert at this opening kartikeyan plays his knight to c6 queen a4 bishop d7 it's actually quite risky to play this opening against dubo by the way main move here is b5 but he goes cd knight d4 rook c8 knight c3 takes takes bishop c5 queen h4 and castles here i think there was this one somewhere somewhere i had seen that bishop h6 is a move as well we'll see bishop b7 rook b8 this is all well known bishop f3 queen e7 what no kartikeyan rook b4 is the move this i am aware of in fact there is an interview with pranav anand on our uh, on our channel where he shows this line but queen e7 is just i mean you're just pawn down uh, and there is not much compensation after rook d1 but he got he went bishop g5 now and uh, at 6 Okay, the point here for Dubo is that if you take on b2, then knight e4 is just killing because there's a pin here. You can't break free from it. Game over. But he goes h6, and now bishop takes f6, queen takes f6, queen takes f6, g f6, and rook d1, rook d8, rook d2. I I don't think this is enough compensation in any way. Rook d1 takes. I think they have traded a pair of rooks but kartikeyan has 2 minutes 13 seconds look at daniel dubo's time 3 minutes 7 seconds i believe that if dubo manages to sort of win this game it will be very tough to beat him while kartikeyan if he manages to hold this he goes through to the next round uh it's generally yeah, i mean you are clearly a pawn down but the only compensation that black has is the bishop pair and bishop pair is generally uh, quite good enough compensation in such open positions for one pawn 
we have seen it in the marshal we have seen it in many other openings and i think kartikeyan believes in his position he says that okay i'm pawn down i know the bar is slightly better for my opponent but i think it's okay you know i can manage it with g4 he's fixing the weakness on h6 and f6 but i think here is an interesting move you can play h5 g takes h5 and then f5 it's not so easy to give up a pawn like this but i believe with bishop f6 you can put pressure here and that is worth a pawn but he doesn't play it i think he plays bishop uh, no he's still thinking he's still thinking here but kartikeyan needs to move yeah he has 1 minute 18 seconds he needs to move faster goes bishop d8 good move uh, maybe the idea is to play a4 and activate the bishop this way so kartikeyan doesn't go for this h5 gh5 f5 idea to activate the bishop this side he wants to activate it this way okay now dubov thinking here I think one idea can be bishop d1 to a4, trade off one of the bishops. But he goes h3, and now bishop c7, move by Kartikeyan. And Dubov plays his knight to e2. Maybe bishop, bishop e5, attacking here, and then if you play knight d4, Yeah, it's playable actually. He plays bishop e5 and attacks b2. Now, you can't push the pawn, you lose it. So, knight d4 must be played. Look at this idea, guys. f5. Take, take. If you take with the knight, I'll take on b2. Then a3 would also fall. And if you don't do, f4 is coming up. So, this would be a good move, f5 here. But I think Kartikeyan goes rook to c8, king g2. King e7, bishop e4. I think Dubov is happy with his extra pawn and an extra minute. He has both these things going his way. While Kartikeyan is happy that he is one point up in this match and must now somehow find a way to hold himself here. I'm an Indian engineer says, Sagarbhai, are you going to Kazakhstan? No, I'm not going, but there is an event which is happening in Kazakhstan, Sati Zuldis, I think, where Arjun is playing and maybe we'll cover that and we'll figure out with the World Championship how much maybe the last part, someone from our team will go there. We are figuring it, but uh, we'll bring the coverage. One very important tournament which is coming up is Sharja Masters, where we are having Vidit, Kukesh, Arjun, uh, Nihal, Prag, Raunak, everyone playing and that is something very exciting. Okay, D5 played, E5 by Kartikeyan. And now f e5, f king e5, why? Why king e5? Why not f e5 here? Wouldn't that be just good? No, he takes king e5. Bishop f3. And he goes back king d6. No, this is looking bad. This is looking bad for white. He's pawned down. He's lost his bishop pair. He is also having a lot of double pawns. I think a bad decision by Kartikeyan, but he's still fighting hard. He has activity of his rook, rook b3, and also the time difference has now narrowed. It's only 24 seconds now. Dubo is thinking a bit too much. He's trying to figure out a way to get in. He wants to get from his rook. To go here but the bishop controls that square this way also there is no entry point so what did he do he goes rook f2 and he says i will attack it this way okay interesting bishop d7 king h4 oof love this move rook f2 so to defend the bishop and then the king comes from here I'm an Indian engineer. Thank you so much. Welcome to the backer of Indian chess. You want to go here and you want to take this pawn. Then you want to move the bishop. Take the pawn on f6. Great move by, by Daniel Dubov. f5. Kartikian getting a bit there. Uh, not desperate. I would say that's a good decision. But g5 should be played by Dubov. He finds it. Good move. Take, take. And now 
along with all other issues the other main problem is that the h pawn is now a passer and it's very strong check here king d6 bishop g2 oof f4 is coming what is the point of f4 once again can you find it king f4 bishop h3 ah that was the cute point that you lose that pawn but no he activates his bishop from other side he goes rook f2 and now rook to g3 check king f5 is hanging right yeah he takes king f5 Karthikian plays bishop c4 okay h4 is just too strong now just the h pawn just marches down the board or king f4 also should do the trick i think once again here dubo is in the winning position and should convert this he has his heart rate is 134 Karthikian at 96 rook h2 f6 played h4 i mean white is in complete control here dubo doesn't need more time to convert this this is enough rook c2 the bishop must move the rook is coming in and he resigns there wow that means that we are at 1 1 and we go into an armageddon Madhidar. Rachit says Nihal has been really inactive. He didn't play in any of the CCT planes and no open tournaments. Do you think he's working either with Ding or Nepo? Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I think so. I think so. Could be. Yeah. I am not sure Rachit about it, but it could be possible that he is working with either Ding or Nepo. I never thought about it. Palguni says, Hey Sagarwai, watching your streams after so long was setting in with college stuff and after watching your stream i realized how much i have missed feeling bad lot to catch up on falguni don't worry everything is going to come you know world championship is coming up and then later on we have more stuff happening this year um and we will have a lot of things that will go on there is going to be this mahindra fide league that's coming up and then we have the Sharja Masters, the Dubai Open, then we have the FIDE Grand Prix that will happen, the World Cup will happen, and then we'll have maybe candidates will be next year, but uh, there will be a lot of things coming your way. The FIDE Grand Prix Women's Tournament ended today, and we covered it extensively. In fact, the entire production of that event was done by Chessbase India along with Nordwin Gaming. In fact, Nordwin Gaming set up all the cameras and everything there so you know it was a very interesting uh, bit of thing with Saumya and Pravin Thipseji doing the commentary by the way it's time for um, for the Armageddon Woo. I think colors Dubo gets white I don't know how they decide on the colors. Yeah, we have to figure that out. We, I will ask and I will let you guys know later. Okay, so d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5, g3. We have the Catalan once again. Will Karthikeyan play dc4, what he played last time? Or will he play something else? Aradhya Bansal says, how are you Sagar Bhai ready for the world championship stream? Who are you backing? Well, my small favorite is Ding Lejeune uh, because uh, he's a good friend. And also, I mean, I enjoy his play. Uh, but also, Yan Nepom Nishi is very strong. Uh, I don't know if I will stream the entire game. Guys, please help me here. Uh, should I stream entire game? Because, you know... It's like they play so slowly. Sometimes one move, they take one hour to to answer, to reply. And I was thinking maybe I can go come towards the end and then we can look at sort of the game together. Uh, that is one idea or I can do a roundup video. What do you think? Make highlights says Yashasvi. Come at the end says Praveen. Falguni Sharma says yes. Mohamed Shoaib says yes. Aditya Chavan and yeah, maybe towards the end. Yeah, that would be a better way. Aradhya says maybe stream a bit in the beginning and then end game openings are always fun to watch. That is true. That is true. 
well streaming the whole game might be a bit booked. okay let's let's first focus on this and then we'll discuss after this game is over because armageddon is very important look at karthike and he's down to 3 minutes 19 seconds bishop e4 queen c1 knight d7 bishop a5 rook c8 knight d2 and i think bishop a8 we are reached here we have reached here b4 played because now there's no c5 coming up and kartikian finds this very nice move knight b8 with the idea of putting the knight on c6 and hitting the bishop classy knight b3 knight c6 a3 oh it's, uh, i mean i'm just not able to yeah a3 knight a5 knight a5 and now this brilliant move here by uh kartikian can you find this move very nice move by black i mean you can make it out from the board kartikian finds this very nice move c5 uh i show speedy i'm not in the studio right now i'm at home i'm streaming from home bishop takes c5 and the point is if you take your a5 is hanging nice play by kartikian bishop f4 bishop goes back to b6 knight goes to b3 knight d5 queen g4 and now just janvi kolipara says i'm looking forward for commentary by anish giri whichever platform he does last world championship enjoyed his live commentary i think janvi he's on chess.com he is doing it along with uh, danny ranch robert hess and for some rounds they have anish for some rounds they have karwan i think that's how it is queen g4 queen f6 played Highly recommend Anish's commentary to everyone who's going to watch it. He's one of the best out there, not just in terms of commentary, but as a player as well. And could very well be that he might be playing the next World Championship match as well. Uh, how much time do both players get? I think in World Championship, the time control is two hours for first 40 moves, then one hour for uh, next 20 moves, and then 15 minutes and so on. Okay, Knight C3. Now, right now, Karthikian doing really well. E5 played, attacking the queen. The bishop took on f3. Bishop takes f3, queen e5. So, he's won a pawn now, queen f6. So, not just positional edge now. He is material up as well. Rook fd8 played. And now, rook c1. I think rook c4 is just killing shot here. The queen is almost trapped. But uh, he goes g6, bishop d7 rook c7 queen f3 and you can trade the queens bishop f3 i think kartikeyan has everything under control but king f8 why rook d3 would have been stronger now knight c5 is actually a powerful move after king f8 but he didn't find it dubov not in his element at all rook d2 king e7 h4 h5 rook a1 rook d8 offering a trade of rooks no he doesn't want to trade again offering a trade of rooks now he trades and um, kartikeyan has one minute 52 seconds and this is armageddon actually so no this is this is not going to work out for and i think kartikeyan is winning this he is winning because he has oh by the way no dubo didn't has one minute 25 seconds okay bishop p7 Rook to d3, great move, great move, hitting the knight. Well, Karthikian playing brilliant chess, huh? Amazing. He goes rook b1, no, that's not a great move that you want to play. Knight to c3 played, hitting the rook, and now at the very least, there could be a draw. Dubo has 1 minute 8 seconds, he goes rook e1.
knight a2 hitting the knight and the knight moves then a2 hangs knight c5 rook a3 takes on a6 knight c3 rook c1 bishop d4 he goes knight to c5 and now bishop takes c5 and b4 should be good but he goes rook a2 which is also fine f2 is hanging you know kartikeyan there is playing with such great confidence by the way against one of the best uh, you know blitz players in the world rook b2 knight a5 king d6 not falling for this trick of rook takes b4 knight c6 fork uh, here he goes king d6 bishop c6 rook b4 bishop e8 king e6 and now it's all over you can literally sense it on dubo's face rook f2 king h3 has happened knight e4 somehow a mating net is being formed king d5 knight if i have 10 seconds left plays his knight to a5 and kartikeyan can finish this game in many different ways just has to be careful not to get checkmated somehow in the center of the board but it's not happening his king has enough squares at the moment but f7 is also not ha not hanging it's well defended kartikeyan thinking a lot goes rook e2 check king here knight g4 king f1 check king e1 check king here and after knight e3 it's a mate and he resigns dubo resigns kartikeyan has beaten daniel dubo what a finish and he moves on to the next stage guys let's give a big round of applause to kartikeyan murli for beating the super strong daniel dubov what a great play by him and uh, today both our indian players won what a day it was vidit gujarati beating yu yangi he was on the edge of defeat but he managed to make a strong comeback there and uh, dubov just did not manage to find his rhythm in this tournament and kartikeyan found his great mating pattern and managed to win so with this kartikeyan will go now oh okay let's see oh it's kartikeyan versus vidit oh my god and so let's say tomorrow is gukesh versus nodir back let's say if gukesh wins just as an idea and parham maksudlu versus kramnik then if let's say kramnik wins then it's gukesh kramnik then nodir back versus parham would play perhaps uh vidit versus kartikeyan we'll see who wins that and then moves forward oof six indians uh, sorry four indians out of six left great Pratichi says now i have lost all sleep i am blaming you sagar if i sleep off during my lecture tomorrow as long as pratichi you are just a student it's completely fine but if you are the lecturer then it's a problem but still you can learn from me how i sleep often during commentary not listening but while giving commentary so you know there is always a possibility to sleep it's never an issue Ah yes you are the professor that is a problem correct that is a some problem that is some problem but you know you can you can uh, manage somehow a good professor always knows how to take take care by the way uh, the sponsor of this event one of the sponsors is it.com so that's amazing uh, vidit will play the loser of parham versus kramnik ah okay got it so um the the question is yeah the question was by the way tomorrow is going to be a cracker of a game don't miss it 11:30 nodir back versus gukesh i am very excited to follow this and maksud lu kramnik as well 
Uh, although I would say Kramnik somehow slight favorite here. Yeah, that the way he's been playing recently. By the way, uh, so we were discussing about this uh, tournament world championship, and I think we came to a conclusion that a good way to cover it would be uh, live stream at the end, like let's say last one hour, and um, then round up videos, right? And that might be the best way to do it. And um, by the way, a big thanks to World Chess for broadcasting this and also uh, allowing us to broadcast this event. Sociology is what you, uh, Pratichi teaches. Okay, brilliant. By the way, guys, you can check out her interview on our channel. Uh, she was there at the Olympiad and uh, she speaks about how She's also doing some, I think recently, uh, Pratichi, if I'm not mistaken, you also did some research on chess. Uh, I hope that went well. When is the World Championship starting? It's starting from 9th. The first game is on 9th. And um, Tejas Kumtekar says, late to the stream, got to go back and watch with its game. Oh, Tejas, just watch it. You're going to have great fun. You're going to enjoy it. Janvi Kolipara says World Championship is fine but would love full commentary of World Cup at Baku. I think I will go to the World Cup. No, let's do this. Generally, like if I go to a place, I can't comment it. So we'll try and see if some of our team members can be there at the venue and I'll be commentating from here. Yes, World Cup we should do because World Cup me there will be Gukesh and there will be Arjun and there will be Vidit and there will be uh, Prague and Nihal and everyone playing. So that will be fun. Bye bye guys. Bye bye. Take care and uh, we will we will see you tomorrow. Pratichi says yes I am writing the paper. We will be presenting bits of it soon. Amazing. Pratichi be in touch and if there's anything that you would like to put out on chessbase india please do get in touch at chessbaseindia@gmail.com and we will let our community know about your research that you have been doing uh, neeraj nrk amit's chess board there was a player named vidit whose moves were so cunning his opponents couldn't beat it ah nice good one good one liked it liked it okay guys Sharjah Masters, just check the list, guys. Sharjah Masters, uh, search it. What a tournament it is. Matlab, kya hi event hai? Top seed Vidit and Gukesh. Same rating, right? They have right now. Then we have, it's starting in May first week. After the World Championship ends. And by the way, Arjun in between is going to play in Kazakhstan. Where he is going to play with uh, guys like Rajabov, Kramnik, um, then some some more top players are playing that event that one is very cool one as well random thing says hi sagar why is mahindra league an indian league with format like csl well actually it's not an indian league it's a global league they name it the global chess league and most likely it will happen outside india so that's their plan it is happening from 21st of june I believe we will be part of it in some way or the other. We will see uh, as the time goes on and uh, when the tournament uh, sort of materializes and more information comes out. But it's a very, very strong league that is happening. May first week is Dubai Open. Third week is Sharjah. Are you sure? Or it's the other way around? Rachit. I think it's first there is Sharjah and then it's Dubai. If I'm not mistaken. Let me just confirm. Yeah. Um, Sharjah Masters. Schedule. Ah, okay. First is Dubai. Then is Sharjah. Okay, got it. Maybe. Yeah, so first we'll cover Dubai. Uh, in one of the days later, please try to cover Fagerness Open. Savita and Vantika have had great starts. 
actually uh, i know that both of them beat gms uh, they they beat one of them beat uh, savita beat setu vantika beat uh, polish gm i think bartel no not bartel the the coach of the polish team but then what happened like after that did they win more games uh, we have coverage on our news page so shahid is writing articles on that ah bartosz sochko yes bartosz one second let's see how's it going vantika is on two points she drew with frozen talish wow she drew with lozen talish and oh my god savita beat i am elham abdullah wow amazing man savita on fire but then she lost to abhimanyu purani okay got it and what about pantika after drawing she drew another game with eric plumquest so both on three points nice nice guys you guys are following everything rachit thanks for the updates prt thank you for the updates as well um sakar ambarnath says video on interview of vantika's mom was superb yeah i also enjoyed it a lot that interview she was you know sort of sharing her experience and in fact we have a beautiful playlist on youtube which i'm super proud of and it is the playlist of interviews with chess parents and it has interviews with um henrik carlson magnus's father uh firuja's father it has uh, interview with nihal's mom and dad uh prag's mom and dad um gukesh's i think dad um arjun's mom and dad mainly dad because his dad spoke more uh, there then we have raunak's mom and dad we have um, interview with then many other talents like we that i think that entire playlist if some parent is out there and wants to sort of get a peek into the brain of the parents of all the top players prodigies in the world that is an amazing uh, playlist i would say thank you ansh musale thank you so much oh look at this he says akash says gukesh will play 27 games in 36 days in may sigman sharja norway are kya hi oh norway chess we will we will broadcast it live maza aayega norway chess to of course and and also also um, gukesh is uh, when he came here and we made this entire thing on attack uh we made uh, an entire video course of his best games on how to attack that is going to come out um in april so please do check that out whenever it comes out uh, i think it will cost around 1000 rupees uh, it's going to be done for chess base uh, so you can check that out it will be very cool uh, we have put in some amazing games there great game selection and what i've done is every few moves i'm like come on think now guys you need to think so i'm sitting with gukesh and i'm like what to play next and you have to pause the video you have to think you're going to have a lot of fun okay guys i need to uh, end this stream now we will uh, speak again tomorrow and uh, we'll continue Om says, if I want to be a competitive chess player, where should I start? Oh, maybe you should start with playing a tournament. That would be very good. Just figure out if there's any tournament happening near near you. Next, Chess Base India club location. So, firstly, uh, the Mumbai club and Indore are now going on, and hopefully, Chennai is something that I'm thinking about uh, to to do, and Pune is somewhere on the horizon. so these are the few uh things we have on mind but but you know it can happen even somewhere else okay neeraj and rk thank you and guys see you all tomorrow bye bye